ABC Sports College Football presents CFA Football, a big one in the Big Ten. The Ohio State Buckeyes and the Penn State Nittany Lions. The colors of autumn starting to appear on the landscape surrounding Beaver Stadium, where today's game will be played. Today's game matchups between the Buckeyes and the Nittany Lions offer some pretty exciting possibilities. Let's join Bob Greasy for that story. Keith, it looks like a lot of offense here today. Uh, some things have changed, though, at Ohio State since the days of uh, Woody Hayes. They're still big and physical, but a possession passing attack. Short routes by the wide receivers, quick drops by the quarterback, and a lot of completions and a lot of big runs. Terry Glenn at the bottom, a short route, 82 yards later, a touchdown pass. The quarterbacks take short drops, get rid of the ball very quickly. The tight ends and running backs catch a lot of balls in this new passing attack. For Penn State, on the other hand, they return seven starters from last year's offense, the number one rated offense in the country. Their problem, the four guys they lost, are the heart and soul, including their center, their quarterback, and their tailback. The big plays of 94 are coming a little bit tougher in 95, and Paterno knows that they're not in sync, they're a little bit shaky, and they need to straighten things out because to win today, they're going to have to score a lot of points. Okay, Bob, the, when the day's done, the Big Ten standings are going to have more shape, and who knows what this day portends. John Cooper, of course, the head man of the Buckeyes, and Joe Paterno in his 30th year as the boss of the Penn State Nittany Lions. Ohio State will kick off a bit of a surprise. They won the toss, elect to defer and take the ball of the second half. It is Curtis Enos and Ambrose Fletcher waiting for it. For Penn State and Enos catches the ball, falls down at the eight yard line. So immediately there's a ragged moment for the Nittany Lions. The quarterback for Penn State this year is Wally Richardson. He's a junior, 6'4", 215, out of Sumter, South Carolina. He set a school record with completed passes, 33 out of 48, in last week's loss to Wisconsin, a loss, incidentally, that snapped Penn State's 20-game win streak and 21 consecutive at home. The Lions will open now with Mike Archie and John Whitman in the backfield behind the Richardson. They've got Scott in motion, a wide receiver. They run it with Archie, trying to get around the corner. He gets across the 10 to the 11. Matt Finkus makes the tackle. The Chili's starting lineup with the backs and receivers now for the Nittany Lions, who are wearing the home blue shirts. Bobby Ingram is the big play man, number 10, a wide receiver. But when people get doubly absorbed with him, Freddie Scott usually has a big day. He, well, he caught a bunch of balls. In fact, 13 passes uh, did uh, Scott catch last week when all the attention was at Ingram. They're calling it second down and six. The ball is just beyond the 11, and Richardson quickly over the middle. The pass completed for a first down to the tight end, Keith Olsomer. Now, the way Ohio State played defense last week against Notre Dame, the tight end was available most of the day. He may be open a lot this afternoon. Jeff Harding's is the big guy up front for them. He leads, he's an All-American. He is from Ohio, incidentally, and was a high school teammate and friend of the Buckeyes starting quarterback, Bobby Hoying. But it's a very good offensive front for the Nittany Lions. They go to the fullback, and you can hear the whacking and cracking all the way to Belfont <laughs> as they slap John Whitman upside the head right at the line of scrimmage. Not a whacking and cracking. Luke Fickle is the guy, number 99, who put the first hit on the big fullback, and he anchors that line from the inside, though the two defensive ends, Finkus and Rabel, are in fact lethal. They are very good. Nickel had 10 tackles last week. Curtis Enos now checks in. He is a freshman from Union City, Ohio. He weighs 231 pounds. He's your tailback. Richardson makes it, rolls it out. He's got some room to run and decides I'll protect my body and go out of bounds as Ryan Miller zeroes in on him, the linebacker on that side for the Buckeyes. Ryan Miller, Greg Belisari, and Kevin Johnson are the linebackers for the Bucks. Belisari in the middle as the leading number of tackles on the team. 
usually when you have great defensive ends, your middle linebacker is going to get. Well, you need to have you need to have somebody smart in there. He's a pre-med major, so uh, he qualifies for having some intelligence. Third down and six now for Penn State. Mike Archie is in the backfield. Good pass receiver. Richardson looking around, goes down the middle with it, hits a man. That's Ingram. Bobby Ingram will make it first down. Nick Lyons at the Ohio State 34, tackled by Anthony Quinn. So the middle of the field has been open for well, the Penn State passing attack. And this is this is what Penn State did not do last week against Wisconsin. They did not hit the square ends. They had not, no play for Penn State last week was over 20 yards. This one, a big gain and a good start for Richardson. All just across the 35 for Penn State. Long count, Richardson turns, gives it. Takes it out of the belly of the tailback, keeps it, throws it out of bounds, and incomplete. John Cooper and the Buckeyes arrived at the stadium some two hours ago, and as they came off the bus, Lynn Swan asked him if they had worked this week on getting some pass rush against Penn State. We worked on it real hard. We think that's a whole secret. Um, quite, quite honestly, we try to try and trying to do a few of those same things that Wisconsin was successful with last week. Keep the ball in front of us. We've got to take the big play away from from Scott and Ingram. Well, so far, they haven't been able to get a hold of Richardson, though they have a couple of times yeah. had somebody in his face. Luke, Luke Fickle was in his face right then. There's your tailback, Mike Archie. With and there's not much there. The Penn State the running game was not effective against Wisconsin. And, uh, it looks like they may very well have the kind of a team this year, Bob, where they're going to have to throw to run. Well, you know, Franny Ganner is the offensive coordinator. He'll never have a team like he had last year. I mean, they led the nation in total offense. They've got a great offensive line back. They've got one of the players are hurt, so they got a little, they're shifting around some of the linemen. But, but the players are good enough to play better than they're playing now. They're just not in sync. Buckeye show blitz. Can't cut through there. And Richardson pass again. Down the middle. Caught by Freddie Scott. First down at the 14-13 yard line. So this, you know, there's a couple of ways to get big plays. John Cooper says we're going to try and take away the deep plays. You know, one way is if the receivers just run straight down, but from the right side of your screen, a square in. The flanker runs a square in. If he catches this ball and keeps going out the other side, he can run away from everybody. Square ins are going to be there all day today. Well, from the 13, it's a first down for Penn State. Buckeyes show six-man front here. Hand the ball off to the tailback, Archie. Archie looking for daylight. Finds enough to get him down to the six-yard line. So they get some blocking from the right side of the line behind Hartings and Marco Rivera. All right, you've got the two big fullbacks in there now. Whitman, 38. Moon, 22. Got an Ingram away. Richardson gives the ball away. With a big fullback, 38 Whitman. And the senior from Wrightsville, PA, will be very close to a first down. Joe Paterno, who watched his team lose last week to Wisconsin. And Wisconsin used the short and very effective passing game to beat Penn State. Paterno has been living by the big play the last couple of years. He's got kind of got spoiled with Kerry Collins and Kajana Carter and Kyle Brady. Uh, those three were drafted in the NFL the first nine picks of the first round. So he kind of got spoiled. He said Wisconsin took away all our big plays and we were forced to be patient and we just couldn't do it. Historically now, you can go back to two years ago in the Michigan game here when they had seven shots at the goal line and didn't get it in. So they've had some trouble against Michigan and Ohio State both in getting the ball in the end zone in, in that first year. But they go now to Jason Sloat. You've got three fullbacks That's in there. That's the elephant backfield. Elephant That's backfield. Right. And it is the biggest of the big, <laughs> John Whitman, and he's going to have the first down. It's going to be first and goal for Penn State. Whitman checks in at 239. Milne is 250, and uh, Slode is 
up around 240. <laughs> There's a fellow who mm, earned a goodly bit of fame here last year, Jason uh, Kajana Carter, and of course yeah. he was a first round first pick for uh, going to Cincinnati and uh, yeah. for up and eat. Yes, he did. Awfully nice young man. I think in time will be a great player. I do too, Keith. First and goal from the three. Richardson hands the ball to Whip. Touchdown. defense straight blocking the three fullbacks are in there and Belisari number 30 never had a chance nice blocking up front a key drive for Penn State to be on the board first and they did it running and passing a little combination of both Brett Conway for the extra point seven to nothing Penn State 603 play in the first quarter they use 10 plays to go 50, uh, 60 yards. The Ohio State Buckeyes started out behind last week. They're there again this week, but they are in a hostile circumstance this week. Good point. Conway, junior from Lilburn, Georgia, will be kicking off. Terry Glenn and Sean Springs, two speed burners, will be the beat, uh, be the beat people for Ohio State. And for those of you who don't know, they play on real grass here at Penn State. It would be virtually sacrilegious. Ten not plays. To have real grass. Here. Yeah, I agree. Keith. Ten plays, 60 yards, a nice drive, and uh, got it in on the ground. I think Joe's going to like that one. Zone. It must be a little bit soft down there because Terry Glenn now slipped as he broke back to get the ball. And you remember that Curtis Enos slipped when he was trying to receive the opening kickoff. It's Eddie George and Nikki Sualua now behind Hoying. Passes away, passes caught by George, and Eddie will have a first down as he gets it up to the 32-yard line. The Penn State defensive front is not all that big. They're outweighed by some 45 pounds by the Buckeyes' offensive front. Terry Killens is linebacker size, as we told you, playing a defensive end. Brad Schioli, Brandon Noble, and Eric Clare has moved in from uh, having some trouble early on. Aaron Collins, Gerald Trillardi, and Jim Nelson are your linebackers. And again, the guy in the middle is the leading tackler. Single back, Eddie George. First down, Buckeyes. George has got it. Looks, finds a little daylight. His progress will be up to around the 34. He's second down and six. The defensive secondary for Penn State, and uh, you like this group, don't you, Bob? I do. I like uh, Brian Miller a lot, Mark Tate on the other corner, but Kim Herring, the free safety, is just outstanding. Jason yep. Collins would have been the hero back, but he heard both legs. That's the strength of the defense. There's no doubt about it. It is the defensive secondary. Second down, a short eight now for the Buckeyes. It's George. Goes outside. He got a hard hit from Brian Miller as he started to turn up field. You get a penalty flag, and you may either have a hole or a push in the back. Yeah, well, let's see. Maybe we'll let, well, let the men who are doing the job call it. But uh, the Buckeyes are walking backwards. You can see that Miller hit George. George is a big guy. He's 227 pounds, and Brian's trying to clear the head. Brian's 5'9 and 183. <laughs> Tell you what. Honey offense. George is alone. Yards. Repeat. First down. So these days, 
it, it's easy to get yourself uh, called for something on a sweep play, even though they have freed the hands of the offensive line. Looks like yeah. number 80, yeah, I got a handful of jersey. That's uh, Ricky Dudley. So the 10 yard penalty brings the ball back to the 25 yard line. They wind up actually with the penalty gaining a yard. 7 0, Penn State out to the first quarter lead, 4.57 to play. Bright sunny day. They had some rain and some tough weather earlier this week as the remnants of the Hurricane Opal, which was so destructive down south. Second down, 16. Buster Tillman and Terry Glenn both come wide to the bottom of the picture. Lumpkin in motion, top of the screen. Here's Horing back, setting up a screen. If he can get it to work, there's penetration. The people in front didn't throw a block. And uh, Clint Holes, who's playing strong safety, just came right in and locked the legs of Eddie Gregory. Well, let's look at the Eddie stories. George. Yeah, the game stories for Ohio State. Uh, you know, offense, keep on trucking. When you're averaging 42 points a game and only over 500 yards of total offense, keep going. Defensively, they're the number eight defense in the in the uh, Big Ten, so they've got the forced turnovers. They lead the conference in the, the number of turnovers, so they need the forced turnovers. That screenplay to Eddie George only was a one-yard loss, actually, on the play, so it's third down and 17. Boying has a lot of time, goes back to George again. The wide people are not available, and I guess they call it a fumble, huh? Yep. It'll be Penn State football as they knocked it loose from Eddie George, and apparently Nelson, the linebacker, was the man who did it. And the turnover comes at 3.49, the play in the first quarter. The Nelson, number 44, gets there first, but the second man in's gonna knock it loose. And see who that is, that's number five. That's Schioli. That's Schioli, that's exactly right. Keith, the, the holding penalty caused that whole series to go fall apart for Ohio State because it, it was third and long, they had to throw underneath, and Penn State came up and made a play. Defense better hunker down here. The Buckeyes are going to be in a pretty deep hole. Here's Richardson rolling out. Can't get loose. He'll gain a couple of yards, but Ryan Miller cracked him down. Number 43, Ryan Miller. That looked like a bootleg all the way, didn't it? Sure did. Bach rolls along at 3.30 to go. Penn State leading 7 to nothing. They own the football, second down and 8. At the 31 yard line of Penn State. Curtis Enos is in there at tailback now. Remember, he's the young man who was playing linebacker when the season started. Ready Scott goes in motion. Pitch to Enos. And some daylight over the left side. He's a big strong one, and he's down to about the 21 yard line. First down for Penn State. Enos is 6'1 and 231. Yeah, I like this kid, Enos. He is a true freshman and uh, kind of been uh, tailback by committee. There's the hole right there. Good blocking on that side. Uh, Johnson and Rivera Hardings. But uh, tailback by committee. They've had Archie and Enos, Pitts, Fletcher, Everly. They've all been in there. Enos. Again, not much this time. Ball from the 22, maybe advanced to the 21. So here comes the kicking team. The Buckeye defense does hunker down and do the job, and they're going to force Brett Conway to go to the field goal try of considerable distance. Well, they had what they wanted, Keith. They had man on man, but Stevenson just couldn't get away from Kelly. See Conway so far this season having a good year. This is a 40-yard try. Four out of eight on his field goal. The kick is on its way. Good. At 1.16 to play in the first quarter, Penn State leads Ohio State 10 to nothing. Ohio State nothing. Ten to nothing. Penn State, home team, out to the lead. 
Conway tees it up on the 35 with Springs and Glenn waiting for Ohio State. Mistakes, two mistakes, including the fumble and the turnover. And a holding call. Big moment so far in this ball game. High hanging kick into the end zone. Glenn will not return it. Hurting seems to be a little bit soft over there, so they'll come out to the 20. Ohio State now trying to start their uphill climb against Penn State. Apparently a defense today that's determined not to let them have anything big. They line up Sulalua and George behind Hoying. It's George. And Eddie George is out to the 30. And very close to a first down on the carry. Once Eddie picks his direction and plant and starts, he's a load. Well, he likes to run left, too, Keith. Uh, this whole offense of Ohio State likes to run left behind Orlando Pace and Jamie Sumner. sidelines Glenn good first down Terry Glenn makes a difficult catch as he falls out of bounds at the 46 yard line and the first quarter is over Terry Glenn a lot of speed Miller's just giving him some space going a little bit high with this throw and after the first quarter it's Penn State 10 Ohio State nothing a look at what Ohio State is going in. Penn State defensively is not done very well. They're pretty good here in total defense, but further down, the sacks, their eighth in the league, passing their ninth, scoring defense, third down defense, not very good. Interceptions and takeaways, they're near the bottom in almost every defensive category, except for run defense. And that's what Ohio State wants to do is run the ball, but Ohio State needs to get something going. They kind of looked a little lethargic here the first quarter. First down from the 46. Okay, guys. Boyd gives the ball off to Sulu of the fullback. He isn't going anywhere. Lost yardage on the play. Back to the 44. Aaron Collins uh, got there in a hurry. So did Schioli. Here's a look at the numbers in the first quarter. Uh, total yards, 92 for Penn State. One turnover on the fumble led to a field goal for Penn State. Penn State had the one good drive offensively. Second down and 12. It go down the sidelines. His man is there. It is caught at the 23-yard line by Terry Glenn. Boy, oh, he's got some foot speed. Well, this is just a good play by Glenn. There's a little play action fake that holds the safety. Miller thinks he's got a little bit of help, 34, but the safety was held by the play action. This is a big-time catch right here. 33 yards on the completion for Glenn. And first down at the Penn State 23 as we start the second quarter of play. Third down and 14 after the loss. Boeing going down the middle. Touchdown, Terry Glenn. That's right. That's right. Yep. He's a handful. He has advertised. Gamble, you got to pay the price. And he is man to man, and he's man to man on the strong safety. That's Clint Holes. He's filling in. If there's one man I want to get Glenn on in that secondary, it's the strong safety Holes. He's playing for the injured Jason Collins. Josh Jackson for the extra point. Older is Brian Heinen. Sort of a feeble thing, but it works. 
and it's 10 to 7. 12, 14 to go in the half. I can take a look at the touchdown. How many times have you heard us when you blitz, you go man to man in the secondary? Here's Glenn, single coverage on the strong safety. The pass is down the middle. The linebackers blitz. Glenn one on one. Hoying knows it immediately, and he looks to his main man, throws it out in front of him, and that's a big drive. Terry Glenn got him going, and Terry Glenn got him in the end zone. Of course, Hoying put the ball right on the money. Of course, that's a quarterback describing the play. Now, well, how would you describe it? <laughs> From a receiver standpoint, I am. Or a tight end, yeah. Just like you. Go line. Curtis Enos. Outside of the crowd almost. Almost got away. Up to the 25-26. Third and 15 after the intentional grounding penalty. And Richardson lets it go. And it is incomplete intended for Chris Kimball. He was in a foot race with Sean Springs. Springs is a tough guy. You're right, Keith. Springs, the best defensive back on this ball club, was step for step with Campbell. That'll get Kenya into the ball game. 10 to 7, Penn State leading by three. And Springs now, after that long run with Campbell, will drop back to receive the punt. Is away. He had a 56 yarder his first time. This is a high hanger, and they get it right at the goal line. Slap it down, and it'll be first down. Ohio State at about the two. So Kenya puts the Buckeyes in a hole. Not bad for Mr. Glenn. Pretty good numbers right here. <laughs> Last three weeks. Yeah, that includes today. All right, here comes Ohio State with the ball at their own two-yard line. Eddie George and Sualua in the end zone. No mistakes here. Just get the ball out. Give it to George. And he crosses the five, falls forward to the six. Here's where you need to really work that big offensive front. But again, as Bob pointed out, Jerry Sandusky's troops are lining up in the cracks. And right behind him, that end zone, Keith, you're not going to be checking off down there. Sandusky saying, hold him in there. But for Ohio State and Hoying, you've got to call a play. Make sure you don't have to check off. And don't do anything fancy with your cadence because you don't want anybody uh, not hearing your cadence. Second down at about seven. Still got it. And we'll pay the price for it. Aaron Collins tracked him down and made the tackle. Number six. Hoying so far in the ball game today. Eight of nine for 98 yards and a touchdown. And they're looking at third down and six. out at the 19 yard line for a first down. That's one of those kind of passes you just hold your breath yeah. hoping it gets there. Yeah, yeah. You just call works. that. Just just call this confidence. This is uh, Joe Hollis, the offensive coordinator, just has confidence in the guys that are running this offense. You've got Hoying, who is the second leading passer in the nation, throwing to Glenn, who is third in the nation in receiving yards. I mean, just a lot of confidence in your people and of course in your offensive line up front. That is also the kind of a pass that can go the other way in a hurry. Glenn now has four catches for 87 yards and they're all first down. Here's Horing back again. Let's it go down the middle. Big tight end Dudley. And Dudley has a big play to the 44 yard line. And Bobby Hoying, as he released the ball, took a lick. Well, let's take a look from behind the offense. Get a look and see what the quarterback sees. Play action fake. Trying to hold the linebackers. Now, 
Looking for the tight end, the big tight end. There he is. This offense, Keith, reminds me a little bit of Penn State's last year. They've got an outstanding quarterback, an outstanding receiver, a great running back, and a tight end that can get downfield and catch the ball. Pat Calhoun checks in at fullback, leading the blocking for Eddie George when he bounces outside and goes for 10, 11, 12, maybe 13 yards. Another first down. The Buckeyes show a little feistiness in the offense with 8.55 to play in the first half. 10 to 7, Penn State leads by three, and you've got Demetrius Stanley shaken up on the play. Watch, Keith, the offensive lineman as uh, Sumner, 72, the left guard, and Pace, 75. They had a little game there, and the two linemen recover. Nice move, and Calhoun find it, found it back over to the left. First down. Orange pass to the sidelines. Good. Oh, he couldn't have been in by much. Down to about the 32. And that'll be another first down for Terry Glenn. First down, Ohio State. He's wearing out the toes of his shoes. Well, and, and, and Hoeing is throwing it out there because he can't find. There you go, one foot in. That's all you need in college. Great effort. He's throwing it out here because he can't find the defensive back, though he's throwing it safe outside. That is just an outstanding catch. Well, I tell you, this kid is something. Well, how far has he come in the well, last couple of years? Glenn. Last year. Straightened out his whole life. Yeah. Well, he deserves That's, it. That was a great catch. It was. Wayne Stanley's son, incidentally, who played for Earl Bruce at Iowa State and was on Earl's staff at Ohio State. Hoying, looking down the middle, goes down the middle. Dudley, touchdown. Dudley, 6'7 and 240. A former basketball player who is growing every week as a football player. Yeah. The you numbers know. on Hoying, Bob, are startling. 13 out of 14. Here's the tight end right here. He's just going to go straight down the field. Now watch the linebacker. The linebacker is going to try and cover him all the way. The safeties take off and double the outside receivers. They're trying to shut down Glenn. So what happens? Hoeing goes to his tight end down the middle. I tell you, it reminds me, this offense, I mean, that's, that's Kyle Brady last year doing the same thing for Penn State. Yep. The extra point by Josh Jackson is good. And so Ohio State goes to the lead, 14 to 10, at 7.32 to play in the second quarter. Happy Valley, Penn State University, the Ohio State Buckeyes lead the Nittany Lions 14 to 10. In the kind of a ball game, I guess basically we expected, except possibly more scoring. Well, I think in this type of game, everybody's been conservative. The defenses aren't allowing the offenses to score a lot of points real quickly. The opening score was uh, run by Big John Whitman, fullback, three yards, capping a 60-yard drive to give Penn State the lead by a score of seven to nothing. This old big old horse is a load when he gets turned up field and his shoulders square. So it's seven nothing in the first quarter. And then Brett Conway, a 40-yard field goal to make it 10-0. Ohio State finally got on the board with Terry Glenn making this reception from a pass thrown right on the numbers from Bob Hoying. That was 10-7. And then Ricky Dudley caps a 98-yard drive with this reception from Hoying. 25 yards down the middle, and it's 14-10 at halftime. And now we check in with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, Joe Paterno said they, they blew a couple of scoring opportunities in the first half, and his team's really got to turn it up for another notch. He wants to stay away from mismatches, and when I talked to John Cooper, he says, we want to get, we want to get Terry Glenn one-on-one -on, -one on number 13. He says he can't stay with him. We want that matchup, and we're going to go after him. He says we have to get better field position. Their kicking game has hurt us, but we want the mismatch because Terry Glenn's the best guy on the field. Keith? Tell you another mismatch uh, they've got out there is Dudley too at 6-7. Penn State kicks off. Ohio State will watch it go beyond the end zone. So Brett Conway, with a little help from the wind, knocks it almost into the crowd. Halftime numbers. Take a look. Uh, Ohio State is doing it through the air with 175 yards. Penn State doing it on the ground with 129. The turnover. 
by Ohio State led to three Penn State points. Time of possession about the same. So from the 20, here come the Buckeyes. down and he's going big for Tillman and Buster Tillman goes up can't make the catch in front of Mark Tate I think if Tillman keeps on going he might have well he had to slow up for the ball wait for the ball to bad, get there bad throw yeah first half for Ohio State they had the ball five times not counting the last to Hail Mary they scored on their third and fourth possessions and uh, they came from uh, their own two yard line on that second touchdown was a great drive. Hey, uh, Bob, you know, those kind of passes, don't you just have to get out to practice and figure out how fast your receivers are and they can blow by a corner, trust them, put it out there so yeah. you don't throw it short? No question, man. that's exactly right. Well, he had six if he throws it in the right place. Goes underneath this time for the first down to Terry Glenn and Glenn curling back looking for some room to run. Couldn't get away from Prater. But he does pick up about 12 yards. Well, the game stories, we said for Ohio State, offensively just keep on truck, and they're averaging 42 points a game. They've got two touchdowns in six possessions. And for defense, they needed to force some turnovers. They have not. Penn State has totaled 190 yards on the ground, but uh, or total yardage, excuse me. Terry Glenn, six catches, six first downs. Ball sets out at the 32. To Eddie George, he works over that right side and found enough room to pick up 11 more yards. And so Ohio State comes out with a little bit more bite in the offense for the second half. A couple of nice adjustments. Uh, Hoying in the first half was on fire. Two touchdowns. George, 14 rushes for 61 yards. And Glenn, the big first half, and Dudley also with a touchdown reception. Just starting the second half for play with. State leading 14 to 10. 43 yard line, first down. Boy, throwing on first down. Wanted to, I should say. And he's down at the 35 yard line as number 92, Terry Killens, fought his way past the blocking and sacked him. Killens is the outside linebacker slash defensive end. He comes most of the time, so. He's a linebacker size, but he is really the best pass rusher, and that's why they send him a lot. Uh, it's his fourth sack on the season. Go from the 43 back to the 35, make it second down and 18. Six. And here's your crowd. 96,655. That is less than the record crowd for last year's Ohio State game, which was 97,079. Which Penn State won, by the way, by 49 points. So it's something like 63 to 14. Third and six. Tillman. So Buster finally gets a chance and makes the grab and moves the markers to the Penn State side. Here's that short possession type passing we were talking about in the opening that Walt Harris, the new quarterback coach uh, for the Buckeyes, brought with him from the New York Jets. It's uh, it's very common. He says you really don't need an outstanding quarterback in this style of possession, short throws, get rid of the ball quickly. You don't have to have one, but he certainly does have one in Bobby Horn. 16 of 19 for 212 yards today. And we're just starting the third quarter. It's on the Penn State 41st down. This is Eddie Gore. Back to the center. Saw the throw. Turned the ball loose, and Penn State's got it. Are they going to call him down? They're going to call him down. Hold on. I think it was Kim Herring 
the safety, the free safety that came and just knocked the ball loose. Second down. It's the second fumble on the day for George. I guess they're not calling this a fumble, but it's it's close. There's Pace, number 75, doing a little holding on Killens. He's going to cut inside. Watch your number three. That's Herring, number three, that oh, knocked it loose. I don't, I don't think, think he, he was down. Was down no. no, no. I think Ohio State got lucky. Yes. Going back. Let it go. He's got his man. Touchdown, Terry Flynn. Boy, is he having some kind of a season. Trader just simply couldn't keep up with it. He outran him and Hoying put it right where it had to be. Well, here's the protection. McKeith, you remember earlier in the game when Brian Miller, the corner on that side, was dinged a little bit? Yep. He's not in the game. Prater, number one, is the backup. Joel Hollis, the offensive coordinator, calls the play, goes down to him, and gets the touchdown straight down the field. All right, here's Eddie George going down. The hat knocks the ball out right there. And it appeared in the melee that the ball came out before he went down. But they got the ball, they got the touchdown, they got the extra point, and they lead by a score of 21 to 10 with 11.56 to play in the third quarter. Bobby Hoying's day, not bad. 12 touchdown passes in the last 11 quarters, and here's the key play in that last possession. This was the play just prior to the touchdown pass. No way his knee is on the ground when the ball comes out. It was a tough call for any official to see because there were so many players around George. For Terry Glenn. Seven catches, 146 yards, two touchdowns, seven first downs. He and Hoying are putting on quite a show. Here's the kick. Ah, a lot of wind air onto this one. And it's Enos. And tentative, and he's taken down at the 14-yard line. The ball is right on the 14-yard line. Messrs. Finkus, Longhouse, Fickle, and Rabel. Look at that. Wally Richardson looking him over and hands the ball off. And the fullback. It's John Whitman. And you saw that uh, the linebacker on that side looked like it was Ryan Miller who came over and hit him and just bounced. We talked about early on the stories for Penn State. They need to establish the run. They have run for 129 yards, a pretty good average, and a touchdown. That's not bad. Defensively, slow the Buckeyes down. Buckeyes in the first half had 14 points. I think they're slowing them down a little bit. They're averaging over 500 yards in total offense, but not in that first drive in the second half. Whitman's run was good for a first down out near the 25. Try him again, but the Buckeyes figure this one out. And Miller and Finkus make the tackle. Six possessions for Penn State in the first half. They scored on their second and third possessions. One of them was helped, the field goal was helped on a turnover. You see, they got the ball on the Ohio State 33 yard line. Passing Richardson was 5 of 15, 61 yards. Enos was the leading rusher with 88 yards in the first half. Ingram two receptions for 22 yards. You got to get the ball to the wide receivers. They can make something happen. Richardson dropping back. Has time and his pass is completed. After the 43-yard line and a first down with Ingram making the catch. Bobby, a senior out of Camden, South Carolina. This is where your big plays are. You've got to run the ball to establish a run and do that and to help your line and your pass protection but you need to get the ball to Ingram and Scott, the two playmakers on the outside. Stevenson, the tight end, is in the ball game now as they run it up the middle to Enos. And Enos.
Davis looks like he's going to have about six, maybe seven. 21 to 10, Ohio State with that opening burst in the second half, leading by 11. Had a little luck on the call and banged it in with a long, looping touchdown pass. Well, that's what good teams do, Key. Yep. They take advantage of a break. Look at that, he, was, he just waited until... Figured out its own flow, and then he picked his way in there for a first down. It's rare that you find a youngster that age with that much patience. It's true, Keith. Uh, and not only does he have the quickness and speed and vision, but he's got tremendous size, 231 pounds. If he stays healthy and keeps himself uh, headed in the right direction, he's going to be an awfully good running back. This is Whitman. He turned it upfield and just dug him in. This is a dinosaur right here. You don't see many schools in college or pro that have a fullback uh, type of offense. Fullbacks that are big like this that can run the football. Penn State has two of them. You've got a penalty flag on the sidelines over there right in front of the bench. Yeah, and there's the other fullback, Brian Milne. He said, take a, take a break, buddy. I'll, I'll, I'll give you both. It's personal foul. It's a dead ball foul, and it's against Ohio State. Here's 20. Keith, I think one thing that helps Penn State in the running attack is the way that the Ohio State defensive line plays. They aren't that aggressive. They engage and play along the line of scrimmage and then react to it, and then they don't come off the blocks fast enough. As long as they do that and the Ohio and the uh, Penn State line attacks them, they're going to be able to get yardage on the ground. Keith? That big old personal foul penalty puts the ball first down at the Ohio State 25-yard line. They run it inside with Milne, and he pounds at them for four yards, down close to the 20. Brian Milne, he's, uh, he, is, he and, and Whitman share time. He's the kid that had the Hodgkin's disease in high school and has beaten it, but he still says he still has to go to get a checkup every six months. Tough kid. He is the uh, outstanding track. He was an NCAA discus champion a couple of years ago. He wants to have a shot if he can get himself tuned up for it at the Olympics. The Olympics next year. Right. Scott. Pretty quiet so far today. Pitch the ball to Ennis. Nothing fancy there, folks. This just pick him up and take off, and it's first down for Penn State. They're very close to it. Comes on the mark. Belisari, the middle linebacker, number 30. Bonhouse, number 70, taking on two, so somebody should be free to make a tackle. Look at Enos. That's uh, Miller, 43, gets in there, gets a piece of it. 15 carries, 103 yards, and it's a uh, football length short of being the first down. So it's third down and about a foot. Enos. He got his first down. There's where that strike throws up. Yeah, that's right. Mike Archie could not have run that play. Mike Archie was too small to get that yardage to get back to the first down, but Enos, 231, can do it. Sean Springs has just hopped off the field on one leg. He's not touching the ground with his left leg. It's either ankle, foot, or knee, but it looks like an ankle. So Sean Springs, their best defensive back, is off the field. I don't know if he was he was he involved in the play. I don't think so. No, he's, he's I, don't, I don't think he was even involved in the play. It's first half for Penn State. They're threatening here as Enos goes pounding up the middle and gets inside the five. They have to go to the two to get themselves the first down. That's the other the corner. Ty the Howard. Other, the other cornerback, Howard. So both cornerbacks for Ohio State get hurt here on successive play. 
Michael McClellan goes in for Howard. Antoine Winfield is in for Springs. And so now the Buckeyes luck takes a bad turn. The and ball Joe is at the three yard line. Yeah, Joe's doing just what he wants to do, too. He's got his running game going. There's a look at McClellan, who is in at the other corner. Now you've got two freshmen playing corners for Ohio State. Second down and one for a first down at the Ohio State three yard line. This is Mill and the whistle before the play. I think it's Penn State. Somebody move. Five yards. Comes back outside the eight. Howard comes back. Hi, Howard. He's he's back in the game now after having his bell rung a bit. Second down and six on the eight-yard line. Enos for the four. Well, he's a hard yeah. customer to take down, isn't he? You can see where, where, where Fran Ganner, the offensive coordinator, wants to do with this offense in this drive. He wants to run it. He wants to run it in. He's got confidence in his offensive line. He's got confidence in Enos and his fullbacks. He wants to get it in and running the football, not throwing. Goal line defense coming onto the field now for Ohio State. They got all the big people they can round up. Third down and two for a first down. Go to Milne. He tries to go over the top. And that linesman coming in from the side uh, does not appear to me to have given him a mark sufficient for a first down. I think it's going to be fourth and very short. Well, right here you ask for a measurement just to buy some time. As a coach, you buy time, say, hey, I want a measurement. Now you've got a chance to talk to some people, think about it a little bit. Last week against Wisconsin, uh, he did not go early in the game, and he's going to be short. He did not go for the touchdown. He did not go for the field goal, went for the touchdown, and didn't make it. But this time, I think the right call is to go for it. This is the 13th play in this possession. 5.39 to go in the third quarter. 21 to 10, Ohio State leads. And a rather critical moment in this whole affair for Penn State right here. And look, look for one of the big fullbacks you to get the ball. Vote. You got a vote. Running inside the tackles. You've got both of them. Whitman on the right, Milne on the left. Milne 22 is the one that seems to be the flyer of the competition. Slow moving around. They go to the big guy, Whitman, and Whitman, I think, has the first down. He went over the top. He certainly would appear in its first and goal, Penn State. This is just tough football. Bellasari, number 30, one of the linebackers. And Miller, 43. Miller takes one fullback. Bellasari took one fullback. Miller took the other one, and they both dove over and met him, but these guys aren't your normal size fullbacks. These guys are tall. 240, 250. Yeah. 6'3. Mill. He's just short. You gotta hand it to the defense of uh, Ohio State. They're not budging. Let's see who that is at the very bottom. It's Rob Kelly, the strong safety, a mere 200 pounds, <laughs> underneath about 1,200 pounds. This is a good drive for Penn State when you come back and you answer the Buckeyes' opening drive of the third quarter. They need to get this in. Second and goal. Whitman. Ohio State's second tackle on the play helped him. 
he pushed him forward when it looked like Anthony Quinn might have pinned him back. Uh. He doesn't get it on the first go. Ty Howard got him first. Yeah. Ty Howard's got a hold of him. And then 26 Grimm comes in. There see you The ball got over. Yeah. Ball got over. Hard call and a good call. He didn't get over for long. I don't think his <laughs> body ever got across. I don't think so either. <laughs> but all you have to do is break the plane. One for two now. Okay. And down by five. 21-16. Richardson back will throw. He's got him. Good. Joe Durham Bishop. to go deep into the end zone. They work on these plays each week in practice. They have certain plays they like to run in two-minute situations. Jurevicius, the fourth wide receiver, comes in and makes the play. All right, Penn State will kick off to Ohio State in a 21-18 ball game with 4.24 to play in the third quarter. Going deep for Brett Conway's kick will be Demetrius Stanley and Terry Glenn. Sean Springs has, we told you a little while ago, and showed you, hobbled off the field, dragging his left foot, and has not returned. So Stanley is out there as the kick returner. High hanging kick way back into the end zone. There will be no return of this one. It'll come out to the 20 yard line where it'll be first down for the Buckeyes. Third and seven. They got him rumbling now. Here they come. Oh, he's got enough daylight to get the first down and does as he crosses the 40 and goes out of bounds at the 42. So it's third and eight. Defense. Claire's been having a great game the whole day. Well, Moe's wearing blue right now as the Buckeyes, Bartholomew, is in the punt. Third of the day. Good one. Well, that's a good one. Bobby Ingram with a fair catch call runs all the way back to his 15 yard line to accept it. 52 yard punt. To look at Eric Claire, the man who made the big defensive yeah. play for. Penn State. And we'll be back with more in the final quarter after this message on the word. Looking at this, uh, you see the rushing comparison in the ball game, which rather clearly defines why it's a three-point game. Well, Penn State is, 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 is gone the ground route, and Ohio State is doing it through the air. And if Joe had his brothers right here, I'm sure that he'd have about a seven-and-a-half-minute drive for a touchdown. Well, that's what he had the last time. Yeah, yep. right. Going to throw it, and they're going to go right at Springs. No, they go underneath to Archie, and Archie's going to have the first down. They were looking at third down and five, and uh, they get the first down. So oh, that Carruth can run. Oh, I tell you. Huh. Here's a pitch to Enos. And so it looks like Penn State just going to beat on them now and try to pound it on down the field. You would think if they're going to throw the ball, though, that they would be testing Springs so rank. And they probably will if they get themselves in a fix where it's third and long. Here's a look at the numbers after three quarters. Uh, we, we tell you, the rushing, the total yardage is in favor of Ohio State. Big passing yards. Ohio
Ohio State getting theirs on the ground. The time of possession about the same. 21-18. Ohio State leads by three. Lions moving it. Enos on to the outside. Big strong tailback. He's got another first down. Ty Howard, 181 pounds, giving away 50 pounds. Just simply couldn't handle it. Watch the blocking of the offensive line. The tight end's going to come in here. The offensive man's going to come to the outside. And my telestrator's going crazy. <laughs> Pullback, he doesn't get a block, but jumps outside. It's the offensive line that's controlling the tempo of this game for Penn State. They're, they're one of the top offensive lines in the country, Penn State. Ball is at the 47 of Ohio State with Archie back in the tailback. First down for the Nittany Lions. Richardson goes to Ingram. And they went to Sean Springs' side of the field. And it didn't turn out that Springs wasn't over there. It was Howard, and they make the play and get the big play. Nice throw and catch and a nice call by Ganter. You just can't run the ball time after time after time all the way down. You got to do a little play action, and that they did. Third down and 11. And the 28, the Buckeyes, 28. Richardson getting some pressure, gets his pass away, and it is caught by Ingram. He out fought the Pitts. Winfield was over there. Ty Howard was over there, both corners on Ingram, and he out fought him for the football, and it's first and goal for the Nittany Lion. I can just hear the Penn State boss. Watch over here, they're going to be a blitz. So that means these two receivers are going to be working two on two on these two outside guys, the corners. Now, Joe saying, no, don't throw it up like that. Oh, no, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, good throw. Orlando Pace checks in. The offensive tackle is in on the goal line defense now. It's its first and goal from the two-yard line. And this is the big fullback, John Whitman, touchdown. Down Penn State. Extra point very big. It's 24 21. His extra point is good. It's 25 Penn State, 21 Ohio State. And here's the catch on third and long that made the touchdown possible. I think the key point here is. And number two, the two defensive backs had been injured. One of them in, was in for Springs. The other had been out of the ballgame. Well, Kajana Carter's got the smile out now, and so does most everybody else in this crowd of better than 96,000 folks. Their team leads 25-21. And we kick off now to Ohio State. Buckeyes have... Had their piece of luck very early on that uh, put him in position for a quick touchdown. Now Penn State has had a bit of luck with a ball that was thrown up for grabs, wound up being caught by Bobby Ingram when the two cornerbacks lost sight of it. And they stick it in the end zone, and now they have the lead by four. Conway hits all of it, and way back and gone. For Ohio State, Bobby Hoying, Terry Glenn, Eddie George, Ricky Dudley, they've had two opportunities and have come up short, no points on the board. This may be their last chance to do something about it. The second best field position starting point in the game. 
Coying back. Got a hurry. Gets it off, and it is incomplete. And uh, number 92, Terry Killens, was reaching for Hoying, and Bobby felt him coming and threw the ball high. So Killens has already made one big defensive play yeah. in this second half. Well, Jerry Sandusky doing a nice job of mixing up his defenses. This time, put a little blitz, had single coverage in the secondary. He was hoping for a sack to get some long yardage on second down, but it's just second and ten. Pat Mouski. We need that tight end right here down the middle. Six foot seven inch. Dudley. There he is, wide open. Yeah, they throw it the other way. They go to Glenn. Dudley was parked over there in the middle, wide open. He hadn't gone deep enough. Well, sometimes, Keith, when the pressure is on, you go to the guy, your go-to guy, and hauling on the series before through an interception to, buy, to Terry Glenn and this time went to him when, when you're right the uh, tight end was open in the middle of the field. Well there's money marbles and trope right here for the Buckeyes. Third down and ten. Got him. That's Tillman. Was, in, was that money, marbles, and chalk? And if they go on and win this game, it might eventuate into a lot of coin. <laughs> you know what I mean. I know what you mean. <laughs> that was a big play. Buster Tillman made it, made the catch on the sidelines. 45-yard line of Penn State, 2 minutes and 57 seconds to play in the game. Don't get locked in on one receiver. Just... Just read the coverage and throw where the, where the defense tells you to throw it. He looks at Glenn. He's not available. Down the middle, it's Dudley. The tight end makes the catch and a crowd at the 12-yard line. Oh, that's a big play. And he was covered. From the left side of your screen, the safeties are doubling on the outside. The tight end's going to be covered by a linebacker. They're coming to your frame short. Right here on the left side, that's Villardi, number 47. Look at this throw and catch. I mean, Villardi never saw it coming, but the safety saw it, and Dudley knew he was going to get hit, and he still hung on. That is a huge play. First and 10, Ohio State at the Penn State 12-yard line. 25-21 Penn State. Eddie George to the five. Number 27, That's Eddie a pickup of right at seven yards. Stop by number 20. Second down. This is an area of the field where the defense says, now, all right, it's time not to stop. Stop sitting back. Let's go after him and make something happen. Maybe knock the ball loose from the quarterback from the blind side, but you've got to make something happen. And offensively for Ohio State, you're not in yet. You still have to get it in the end zone. Ball is on the six, where it is second down and four. Eddie George, touchdown! Twenty-four carries, a hundred five yards now for Eddie George. Well, they're going to run behind seventy-five, pay seventy-two, Sumner. Get the ball deep to him. And nobody touches him until he gets into the end zone. I don't think nobody lays a hand on him. No, There's Pace so. 75 looking for somebody to block. <laughs> He'd run over the other play. <laughs> the extra point now. Pretty good size. They need it for three-point lead. He got it. So it's 28 Ohio State, 25 Penn State, with a minute and 42 seconds to play. Eddie George lined up deep, 
Gets the ball deep so he can read the blocking. Dudley with a block on that side. Dudley was the tight end that made that great catch down the middle, and here it is. From the right side, number 80, releasing down the field. 47 is Florida. No safety in the middle of the field, but here they come. Both safeties. You know, this, this tight end, a basketball player. He used up all four years of eligibility playing basketball, and for the last couple of years has played football tight end and is just an outstanding uh, receiver. He's from Henderson, Texas. Number 39, Curtis Enos. Number 25, Emerald Tucker. I'll tell you what, in about two more years, he, some professional team takes a hold of him and lets him grow a little more. He might be pretty exciting stuff, huh? With that size. It's <laughs> a basketball team. <laughs> yeah. Dick <laughs> uh, uh, Cullum, aircraft carriers, <laughs> space eaters. <laughs> Low spinning knuckleball, knuckleballing away, did not go out of bounds. Did not go out of bounds. It's going to be whistled dead at the 19-yard line where the man picking it up at his knee touched the ground. And so it'll be first down for Penn State at their own 19 with a minute and 42 seconds to play. And they trail Ohio State by three points. Plenty of time here. Timeouts remaining. Penn State has three. And of course, in college football, every time you make a first down, the clock stops. So you don't need a two-minute offense. Just make first down. Mike Archie and John Whitman back. Richardson lets it go. The ball is thrown to the sides to Freddie Scott. Scott's going to play it the whole second half and suddenly bang. There he is. First down, move the change, clock stop. 1.36 to play in the game. 28-25, Ohio State. That ball goes out just beyond the 36. It's a good test for the young quarterback, Wally Richardson. He faced something similar to this against uh, Texas Tech in the first game of the year and took him right down for a score. No pressure on him. The pass is away to John Whitman, and Whitman's got another first down for Penn State. Not only no pressure, Keith, but nobody in the flat to cover the court, the, 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 the fullback. The fullback is just going to slide out here in the flat. Now watch, as everybody's going to drop back. Play action fake. Stop it right here. There's nobody in there, nobody in the region. Catches it and runs for another 12 yards. From the 49, Richardson back. This time, pressure hit as the ball is away and intercepted for a trap. Incomplete forward pass. He trapped it. Incomplete. Second down. That was a close play. Wally Richardson has had pretty good protection. That's Finkus, 92, that gets in. This could have won the game for Ohio State. Ball hits the ground. Good call by the official. Tide doesn't really help Penn State. They've already lost the game in the Big Ten. Right. Now this is Enos. About three yards on that carry with a minute 16 to play in the game. And time called by Penn State. So they'll talk. Plot, plan, and hope. Timeouts remaining, very important, with 1.16 to play. Both teams with two, 28-25, Ohio State. Mike Archie, John Whitman at the backfield, third down and seven. And Richardson has the ball knocked away, picks it up. And he's still trying to find something, and suddenly he's taken down at the 40. That's a loss considerable. About 10 yards or 12 yards. It'll be fourth now and 19 for the Nittany Lions. And here's Mark Jones. This is a big play by the nose tackle, Luke Fickle. Right, number 99 breaks free. He's the wrestler we talked about earlier. Knocks the ball loose. 
Richardson has the presence to pick it back up, but now the rest of the defense is closing in on him. That's a big play, big play by the by the defensive line for Ohio State to be getting pushed around. Even if the pass had been uh, incomplete, you were looking at fourth down and seven, but now you're looking at fourth and 19. That's a goodly bit of difference. 105 left to play in the game. And in case you just walked in, Blanton Flowers, it's 28 25, Ohio State. And they just got that lead in the fourth quarter. Gonna throw the ball down the field, Keith. You can't expect a screen no, pass. Gotta go down the, down the field. Richardson, Chase, lets it go. There's a guy. He's got Ingram down there. It is incomplete. Ingram out bottom to set up the Penn State last touchdown, but this time he couldn't quite get to it. Anthony Quinn and Antoine Winfield made the defensive play. on the left side and run past both corners as the ball was underthrown and allowed him to catch up. He got his hands on it. Yeah. Oh, he's tough. There's another look. Ingram is the only guy that got off his feet to get catch the ball. Everybody's looking at it. Everybody's going for it. It doesn't have anybody's name on it, so it was a good call. No call, good call. 28 25, and now the Buckeyes have to run out the clock with 55 seconds. And Penn State obviously is going to spend its last time out. The clock is still running, however. The whistle stopped them before it was snapped, and that the clock has kept running. So it's now down inside 40 seconds. And the genuine Chevrolet, most valuable players of the game, are Bobby Hoying for Ohio State, 24 out of 35, 354 yards. Three touchdowns. Curtis Enos from Penn State, 25 carries, 145 yards. Chevrolet celebrating its 120, its 25th year of NCAA sponsorship, donating a thousand dollars to each school's general scholarship fund, rewarding outstanding students for academic achievements and help those in financial need. So the clock is going to be left to run out. Penn State will not spin that final one, and. Your final score, the Ohio State Buckeyes, ranked number five in the nation, continue undefeated by a breath as they beat Penn State by a score of 28 to 25.